Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Today I wanted to talk a bit about uh, writing a Camp SDK with existing SDKs. So a bit about myself, my name is Giancarlo. My name, um, I'll call me Gino. I'm a software engineer at Sentry. I'm mainly working on our Dart and Flutter SDK, but um, also working on a Camp SDK on the side. And also participated last year in our Google Summer of Code for Kotlin Foundation, working on a project called Kflogger, which is an experimental KMP version of Flogger, uh, Google's logging framework for Java. and was a fun, um, lots of support from Google and JetBrains there. And a bit about Sentry, we're mainly an error monitoring tool, and we support many different frameworks and SDKs. And that's why it was evident that we had the tools there to create an KMP SDK, because our iOS and Android SDKs were full of features. And we could have just uh, used those to leverage all the stuff we have out of the box. And today, I want to quickly go through simple examples on working from zero to a, basically in, embedding those native SDKs into KMP. And the first step is how do we use those? Um, then writing the public API and then implementing this platform specific stuff. And then um, how it would look like from the user's perspective. So the first step is the native SDKs. So for Android, this is pretty easy. I think almost everyone here will know how to do that. You go into your build. Uh, file and then add it to your Android main dependencies, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Then you can use the uh, SDK library in your Android main source set. For iOS or any Apple target, it's a bit more nuanced because uh, you want to create Kotlin bindings for to call the underlying framework that you're trying to um, embed into your application, into your library. And the first uh, thing that we could do is here is using the scene wrap tool with defined headers. And I'm saying define headers because you have to define your headers yourself. And as an example here, you can also have this example um, on the Kotlin docs. You create a .dev file, and you specify a language, and then you d define which headers you want to create bindings for. In this case, I um, have the Sentry SDK header, which is tr uh, taken straight out of our Cocoa repo. So it's, uh, I haven't really modified it. All I did is I stripped all the parts we didn't need. So this interface is actually pretty long, and I just stripped all the parts I didn't need. I was focused on um, wanting to start with configure options function, and that's it. And in the build file, you add the additional step to create a scene or op. Um, and then afterwards, you can call it directly in your uh, iOS or any Apple target source set. The other option is much easier. You can use CocoaPods. Um, the setup is much more easier. You just add it to your uh, Gradle plugin, and then you can directly use it. And it will create all the bindings for you. And yeah, that's it. You can then use it in your app and um, use it directly. So what's the good and bad thing? So the good thing about using the defined headers is that you can um, basically strip all the stuff you don't need. So it will, in essence, create less Kotlin bindings for you. But the bad thing is it is prone to change. So if your underlying framework that you're using on that side is often changing or you add new features, you always have to modify your headers again. And also for tests, tests don't work out of the box. It means that you have to link to the framework because the tests don't know what to do with those headers that you have defined and the Kotlin bindings that they're that's calling those headers. So you also have to need additional steps to make it work for tests. For CocoaBots, it's very easy to use. You just add it, and it will create the bindings for every single header, and I assume for every public header. And that's also one of the bad things about it. It will create it for everything. Um, so it really depends on requirements. If you think the API is stable enough, then using the defined headers might be uh, the way to go. For public API, so we at Sentry, we already have some defined guidelines that we design our SDKs in, all of our SDKs. So there was not much thinking there. Just an example, simple example, um, just have this init function, which causes Sentry bridge, which is literally the bridge to our platform-specific implementations. And it's... Yeah, it's a, it's an expect class, and then we want to um, use our specific platform SDKs um, when implementing the initialization function. And now let's go over through some steps on how to do that. Um, very easy, since we now embedded our native SDKs so as dependencies, we can use them directly. So for Android, it's pretty easy. We just use our Sentry Android init, and there's a stop step here that where we can see we are converting. Um, this configuration to a platform-specific configuration. That's because this 
options configuration is, is set in our common class, so the platform initializer doesn't know how to handle that, so we have to convert it to the platform-specific configuration. And the same for iOS. And there's a way to work around that so we don't have to convert stuff. We can directly um, use the platform-specific um, types. And one of the things is using type alias. And it's not only good for defining existing types, adding different names for existing types, but we can also use it in KMP. And let's see how it looks like. So for this Sentry Bridge thing, um, the problem is we always have to convert stuff. And this might be non-trivial for some cases. Um, it's not always simple, and the best case is we try to reduce code duplication. And the reason is, as I said before, the sentry options in this configuration is defined in the common class, so it doesn't know how to use that in the platform-specific um, SDK. So the first step is let's make this an expected class, sentry options with a .dsm property well, and a nullable string, and then we can use it directly uh, with type alias. And that means every time we call sentry options, we're directly calling the, the platform-specific options. But in this case, it doesn't work directly. It only works for iOS. That's because whatever we define and type alias to, it has to match um, all the types and naming one-to-one. -one. And for iOS, it does. There is a DSN called, uh, there's, there's a DSN with a nullable string. Um, for Android, it isn't because it's written in Java. And Java, everyone knows, has getters and setters, and it doesn't, and getters and setters aren't, are not a variable of type string, a nullable string. So in this case, what can we do? The first thought is just implement type aliasing just for one platform, at least have some code uh, reduction for one platform. Um, usually it would be the other way around where you type alias stuff to the Android SDK or Java SDK, but in this case it's just coincidence that it's reversed. Um, and the other thing is that's important is that you would have to adjust, adjust your API to the API you are type aliasing to. So if Java has a lot of getters and setters, you also have to need functions of getters and setters in Kotlin, which is not really what you want to do. It's not idiomatic Kotlin. And then a, a way to work around that issue is to um, expect an empty body and an extension method on that, on that class. Um, and we can actually type alias an empty class directly as well. And through the extension method, we also have access to the underlying members and um, properties of our specific platform specific option. But I have to be a little bit careful here for shadowing. I'm not sure how it will work out in the new K2 compiler, so it might not work anymore. We will see. Um, so it will create or change the code from this to this, which is basically elim eliminating the step in between. Um, and this is not only specific for conversion, it, it can be used for pretty much anything that we want to type alias directly to. It just makes the code easier to use and you have direct access to the platform specific stuff. So I'm mentioning companion objects here because I want to show that using type alias is not always straightforward and easy and might need some workarounds. Um, let's change it up a bit and say we are expecting a class entry with a companion object and a, and a function in it. And when we try to type alias this, it says that it cannot find the, the companion object. And it makes sense because there is no companion object in Java to type alias to. So what do we do here? Um, what we do here, we just ignore it and we suppress the thing and we just use it anyway. Um, and we just use it and, and um, can call it directly, we just have to be careful in testing, so it can crash in runtime if you're not careful, if you are just ignoring stuff, so properly test this thing. And to show that I'm not crazy, and I'm not the only one doing this, this is an example from Ktor. They're also suppressing stuff, um, and a bunch of other Kotlin repos are also suppressing stuff in serialization and daytime. Um, yeah, so for the usage, how it looks like from the user, then you just have to add this library to a common main, and you have to provide the framework somehow to link to for iOS targets. So in this case, as a user, I would just use CocoaPods for the least uh, painful method. And um, I'm using here this link only flag to true because we don't care about creating Kotlin bindings as a user. I just want to link to the framework so the KMPSAK works. Um, and then we can just do a simple function where we initialize it in common code and then call it as soon as possible in our 
iOS app, but this is more Sentry specific. And the same for Android, that we can call it, and that's basically it. Uh, that's the most basic steps to get to a working um, SDK. Just summarize, try out, expect actual with type alias. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, there are many caveats, though, that may warrant another blog post or a talk by itself. There's a lot of things that don't, don't work or have to be worked around in. And using Scener up with defined headers uh, might be useful if you know the API is stable. Otherwise, you might use CocoaPods. Thank <laughs> you.